The summer is here and so is the new Mini Cabrio, which can go topless in just about 18 seconds. When the roof goes down, it uh, lowers the boot volume from uh, a surprisingly spacious 215 liters to just about 160 liters, but that's still a pretty good boot for a small convertible like this. Is it small? I don't know. <laughs> Let's look in the boot. If you want to sit on the tailgate, be careful. I'm too heavy. Funny because in a smart, I was within limits. At first glance, the boot looks like in all convertibles, small with limited access. But if you need to pack something bigger which doesn't fit through the standard hatch, there is a way around it. The shelf you see here can be lifted when the roof is closed. Then you get the entire 215 liters, which is about 25% more than in the previous generation. Otherwise, Mini still looks like a Mini, even if it is around 80 centimeters longer than the original. This is the 2 liter 192 horsepower Cooper S, which is too fast for its own good. At the same time, it's not hardcore enough like the JCW or the future GP2, but it's fast enough. I think I would probably go for the regular Cooper, the 1.5 3 cylinder 136 horsepower, and I'd be more than happy. By the way, this car accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.1 seconds, which is about half a second, 0.6 seconds slower than the regular. <laughs> than the regular Mini Cooper. I've just put it in sport mode and listen to this. Now, incidentally, you can do it at uh, just about any speed. I will now drop a gear. I'm now in second gear, doing about 45, 50 kilometers per hour, as long as I've got revs between three and four. Whenever I let go of the throttle, <laughs> it'll keep doing this. Okay, um, back into... Um, back into uh, normal mode and uh, automatic mode. This comes with the six-speed automatic. Mini Cooper Cabrio starts at about 22,000 euro. This Cooper S with extras costs about 45, 46,000 euro. I would save some money on the engine and go for the regular Cooper. Other options which you may or may not want to consider are, for example, these three dials on top of the dashboard. One is for the oil pressure, one is for the turbocharger pressure, and one is a lap timer. Sorry for the shaky camera work. The roads are really bad around here. It's not that the ride is crashy. So I don't think you're going to be doing any laps in the Mini Cabrio, even in a Cooper S. And I don't think you need your oil and um, turbocharger pressure. Anyway, these look like aftermarket. They're really, really ugly. Other options. This car has sat-nav, of course. Why would you specify a car without sat-nav these days? Unfortunately, this one doesn't have real-time traffic information, something which is available on BMW, but Mini doesn't want to give this to us. Maybe after the facelift, we'll, we'll finally get it. They have to add something after the facelift, right? Upholstery. This is an Alcantara JCW seat. It looks very nice. Uh, it gives very good lateral support and all that. But if you're buying a cabriolet, you want leather. Why? Because it's going to get dusty and uh, a couple of raindrops will leave stains. So you really, want, uh, you really want leather. It's much easier to maintain. I think minis are becoming increasingly civilized these days. And mini is taking away any reasons for you not to buy this car. The boot. 215 liters, 4 liters more than in a hatch. Of course, when you lower the roof, it goes down to 160, but that's still more than in a Mazda MX-5. 
space yeah there is plenty of space here at least for two people and there are these two jump seats in the back because they're not really proper seats unless your friends are legless well not literally but they will be legless when you put them in there and then they won't mind I won't dwell upon practicality issues uh, within the cockpit because I've talked about it in length in my other mini reviews. You can uh, watch the hatch five door Clubman reviews by clicking the links below or a link somewhere here around my head. Or is it here? I never know because in the camera it's, everything is the other way around. The only real problem I have with this car is rear visibility because of the roof. You just have to use wing mirrors. But apart from that, there's really no reason not to buy this car. Unless you're dumb and you don't like convertibles. <laughs> so, this is the new Mini Cabrio. If you're looking for legitimate reasons not to buy one, Mini will tell you there aren't any. And how do you like the new Mini Cabrio? Let me know in the comments below. Share, rate and subscribe. Please support me on Patreon and PayPal. It will help me make more videos, not necessarily just car reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.